10 Unsolved Murder Cold Cases Number 1. Lord Lucan When Lord Lucan's nanny was bludgeoned to death in the basement of his family home in 1974, he vanished into thin air. The dashing aristocrat, who was nicknamed Lucky, had a fondness for vodka martinis, was the chief suspect in the crime, and a year later an inquest declared him responsible. Richard John Bingham, the 7th Earl of Lucan, was said to have mistaken Sandra Rivet, 29, for his wife Veronica. Veronica, who had filed for divorce and was locked in a custody battle with her estranged husband over their three children, said he had admitted the crime at the time of the incident. Lord Lucan's borrowed car was later found abandoned and splattered in blood at the cross-channel port of New Haven, East Sussex. One theory is that Lord Lucan scuttled the powerboat he kept there, from which he jumped into the sea with rocks in his pockets. Over the years, more than 70 sightings flooded in from around the world. Others believed he was being protected and hidden by rich friends. Only last year, Sandra's son Neil Berriman sensationally claimed the aristocrat, who would be in his mid-80s, was a Buddhist who was alive and housebound in Australia. Number 2. Catherine Lillian Armstrong The Halloween murder of retired headmistress Catherine, known by her middle name Lillian, sent shockwaves throughout Newcastle in the 1960s. The 70-year-old devout Methodist was found battered to death at her home in November 1963. She had been stabbed in the head 28 times, with a nylon stocking tied tightly around her neck. Scotland Yard were drafted in to help in the biggest murder probe 1960s Tyneside had seen, with all officers' leave cancelled. Lillian was last seen alive looking out of her window by two children at 6.30pm the previous evening. She then failed to turn up for choir practice that night. Thousands of people were questioned in connection with the murder, but no weapon or motive was ever found. Police admitted at the inquest that they were baffled. Number 3. Esther Soper The killing of widow Esther in January 1976 rocked the tight-knit Plymouth Brethren community she was part of. Quiet Esther, 51, had failed to turn up for a meeting and when Brethren members went round they found her body wrapped up in a bundle of curtains. It later emerged Esther had been bludgeoned with a glass bottle and strangled with a pair of her own tights. One line of inquiry was the fact the widow's house had been put up for sale, with police focusing on a Clifford Sparks who had arranged a second viewing on the day of the murder. Esther's house was found to have been ransacked and detectives thought the killer could have broken in to rob her. Speaking at the time of the murder, Esther's father said, I do not know who could have done such a terrible thing to my daughter. She was a lovely person. Number 4. The Zodiac Killer the creepy Zodiac killer reveled in the publicity surrounding his horrific crimes. He murdered five people in less than a year, made a phone call confession to police and even sent them a piece of the victim's bloodied shirt. He called himself Zodiac in letters to the press and his messages included a crosshair symbol which he sported on his hood during one attack. One of his coded scribblings was deciphered and read, I like killing people because it is so much fun. Zodiac began his rampage in December 1968 in Benicia, shooting David Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16, who were parked on a lover's lane. Seven months later, Darlene Ferrin, 22, and Mike Maggio, 19, were targeted in similar circumstances, with Maggio surviving. In September 1969, picnicking Cecilia Shepherd, 22, and Brian Hartnell, 20, were threatened with a gun in Napa County. Zodiac tied them up and stabbed them, with Shepard succumbing to her injuries. The killer's last known victim was taxi driver Paul Stein, 29, who was shot in the head in San Francisco. Witnesses described the culprit as white, 25 to 30, with glasses and a crew cut. Suspects include Lawrence Kane, a peeping Tom who greatly resembled Stein's killer, Ross Sullivan, who had committed a similar murder in 1966, and Arthur Lee Allen, who was obsessed with the Zodiac and identified by survivor Mike Maggio. 
the unnamed killer continued to taunt cops until 1971, when he fell silent. In 1974, he sent a new letter noting, Me, 37, SFPD, 0, a sick boast that he had claimed 37 lives, while the police had been unable to capture him. Number 5. Susan Long Teenager Susan had been out dancing with her boyfriend in Norwich in March 1970 before getting the bus home to Aylsham in Norfolk, but she never completed the seven-minute walk to her parents' home and her body was found on a country lane the following day. Susan had been sexually assaulted and strangled. Her body was found face down in a puddle and on full view, indicating her killer had panicked. The 18-year-old was fully clothed, but a bracelet and shoe were missing and have never been recovered. Forensic evidence revealed her murderer had a rare blood type and hundreds of samples were taken. A paint fragment from a car was also found, but police were still unable to crack the case. Some 50 years on, detectives say they haven't given up. Investigators have a DNA profile of the killer, who they believe was a local man. Number 6. Rita Ellis Airwoman Rita, 19, was found sexually assaulted and strangled close to RAF Halton, Buckinghamshire, in 1967. Her body was discovered by a dog walker in a copse, partly hidden under leaves and foliage. A number of arrests were made at the time of her death, but no charges were brought. Last year, police launched a fresh appeal after building a DNA profile of the killer, asking for people to come forward with possible suspects. They said the offender was either in his mid-teens or mid-twenties at the time, which would make him in his mid-sixties or seventies today. More than 200 suspects were eliminated as a result of the appeal, with the killer remaining at large to this day. Rita's sister Tina, who was 10 when the murder took place, branded her attacker an evil, sick person who just couldn't contain themselves. She pleaded, it's been a long time coming, but we want justice for Rita, Someone somewhere must have some information. Number 7. Maureen Dutton When Brian Dutton arrived home four days before Christmas in 1961, he was concerned to find the house in darkness. The research scientist lived in Notty Ash, Liverpool, with his wife Maureen, 27, and sons David, 2, and Andrew, who was less than a month old, and the house should have been teeming with life. Instead, Maureen's body was found lying on the living room floor. She had been stabbed to death in front of her children. Police failed to find the murder weapon, believed to be a long-bladed knife, and no one had been seen going in or out of the home. Maureen hadn't been robbed or sexually assaulted. No screams were heard and her sons hadn't been harmed. Theories ranged from a fake doctor gaining access to the house to a good-looking stranger who was seen nearby. One theory said Maureen was victim of a sacrificial killing by a Polynesian cult operating in the area. Given the passage of time, the killer may well have taken their secret to their grave. Number 8. Sultan Mahmood Bradford taxi driver Sultan was brutally murdered in a bizarre crime that left police struggling to find a motive. Sultan was a 31-year-old father of four, and his body was found in February 1979 in a disused coal yard. He had been stabbed and burned almost beyond recognition. Police discovered he had recently made two trips to Pakistan with vans and wondered if he had been involved in smuggling. A mysterious oriental-style dress ring was found close to his body, and his head was bound with dark blue material with a white leaf design and a pink ribbon. In 1983, a prison inmate went on trial for the murder, but the prosecution quickly fell apart, with the judges branding two witnesses, fellow prisoners, totally dishonest. Just over a decade later, a member of the public came forward with new information that they'd kept secret for 15 years. This new lead was considered worthy enough to reopen the case, but charges were never brought, and the killer has never been brought to justice. Number 9. Bernard Oliver one of the most grisly unsolved crimes from the 1960s saw the body of Bernard, 17, cut up and stuffed in a suitcase. The teen had left his home in Muswell Hill, North London, to see pals in January 1967. He was reported missing by his family the following day, while 76 miles away in a Suffolk field a body was found. 
With no clues as to the victim's identity, police photographed the head and sent the snap to the media. Bernard's younger brother Chris, 15, saw his brother's face on the front of a paper whilst on a bus. Suspects include Dr. John Biles, a former ship surgeon who was said to be part of a paedophile ring. He reportedly admitted murdering a cabin boy and cutting up his body. Dr. Martin Reddington was also in the frame and was a joint suspect alongside Biles for a string of crimes, one involving the murder of a lad in 1973. And number 10, D.B. Cooper. Like a story straight from a Hollywood blockbuster, taking flight 305 from Portland to Seattle in 1971, a man calling himself Dan Cooper handed a note to the flight attendant claiming he had a bomb in his briefcase. When the flight landed, he exchanged 36 passengers for a ransom of $200,000 in unmarked bills, plus four parachutes. Keeping several flight attendants on board, the Skyjacker ordered the plane to take off in the direction of Mexico City and fly low and slow. Just after 8pm, somewhere between Seattle and Reno, he lowered the plane's rear steps and jumped out into the night. D.B. Cooper, as he later became known, who wore a business suit and looked to be in his mid-40s, was never seen again. A total of 800 suspects were considered in the first five years, narrowed to two dozen by the FBI. They included Richard Floyd McCoy Jr., who undertook a similar hijacking just five months later, Robert Rackstraw, a pilot and Vietnam veteran who resembled the photo fit, who denied being the skyjacker, whilst military paratrooper Walter Rieke was said to have confessed. No one was ever charged, with some believing the audacious criminal wouldn't have survived his descent into a heavily wooded area. In 1980, nine years after the Daredevil hijack, $6,000 in ransom money washed up by the Columbia River, 12 miles from where the mystery man had parachuted from his plane. The case remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in FBI history. Thanks for watching today, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave your comments below and see you in the next one.